Hello, my friends. Welcome to EdTech with Adam. Today, we're continuing our collaborative annotation series where we're comparing some different platforms that we can use for collaborative annotation in our online or blended learning classrooms. Today, we're moving on to Google Jamboard, which is a really interesting platform that I found out uh, a few months ago, and I have heard some really good things about it from a lot of teachers. So let's jump right into it here. So on Google Jamboard, it's kind of like a Google Slide that you can do a lot of collaborative drawing on. And of course, you can do this in Google Slides as well, but this one's more meant to be kind of like a whiteboard, a collaborative, uh, collaborative learning space that you can also use for collaborative annotation. So in Google Jamboard, we can't copy and paste text like we did before. It usually only takes pictures and screenshots and things like that. So what we're going to do is hop over to our handy dandy go to openstacks.org astronomy example. So here it is. Now, like I said, I can't copy and paste text. So what I'm going to do is use the snipping tool in Windows, just for just search for snipping tool, and I'm going to click new, and I'm going to just highlight what we usually take for our copy and paste and here I can just click edit copy hop back over into Jamboard and paste it right in here I'm just gonna I'm just gonna press control V and here we go it's pasted in here now because it's cut from a smaller piece on that original OpenStax page the resolution is not going to be the best, but it, it looks okay, it's passable. But let's say I'm teaching a class and here is what I want my students to read. Maybe I give it to them and all the students are included in on this conversation. So either uh, I'm using this as a standalone kind of platform and in which case I need to invite all of my students. Or if I'm using a learning management system like Canvas or Blackboard or Brightspace, all of my students have already been rostered into my class so they'll automatically be able to see this and collaborate on this once I publish it in the class. Now as usual we have our table uh, which I've gone through to see what we can and cannot do here and let's just proceed down the table and take a look at Google Jamboard here. So first of all in terms of annotation, what can we do for collaborative annotation? Well we have a writing tool here where you can take a pen and I think there are some options here. You can choose a marker, highlighter, brush, uh, which color you're writing in. Let's choose a, this lovely bluish color and we can write on things and maybe I can circle a certain section and write the uh, space or something. Uh, perhaps some of your students have uh, pens where they can digitally write or uh, they can maybe just write simple things on here. Uh, perhaps this is for a lower level that you might want to do some kind of like big text annotation like this with. In any case, this would be the kind of method of annotation. Or another option is, for example, we could underline something or circle something. Or we could even take this tool and look at something like a highlighter and we could highlight so we could highlight this here and then we could add a sticky note. So if you go down to the fourth option here, it says sticky note and I can say, ooh, space, <laughs> whatever you want to write for sticky note. And I'm just going to take this and I can move it down here. So this is how our collaborative annotation might look like. And we can also, uh, Again, add images, like we added an image earlier here. You can also just copy and paste images, which is really convenient. Uh, and, you know, there are just a few options here. Basically, the pen, the eraser, a select tool, so you can choose things like the picture to move it around and, and alter it. And we also have a laser pointer. So if you're doing collaborative annotation live in a class where students are all contributing something, you can just do this, and you can circle stuff, and this disappears after a little while. So you can maybe make a quick comment, wow, <laughs> whatever it is, or just if you want to highlight a specific section of the text or a specific section of the picture, it's a pretty cool feature just for a live, live collaborative annotation, perhaps in conjunction with your students. So let's jump over to another user and let's try the second thing in the table, which is responding to an annotation. Now, 
unlike Google Docs, where we can go in and we can respond to something directly, uh, in this platform, in Jamboard, we can't really do that. We can manually go in and we could circle something else someone has said, and we could respond to that and say, wow, or good idea, or something like that. So we could do something like this, but it's not really the same. It's not, it's okay. It's, it's a form of responding, but not quite as clear cut as some of the other platforms you've looked at. So let's hop back over to the teacher side and see, can we go through all of this and see who did what? So if I'm hovering my mouse over or try to click on something here, can I see or filter out what some of my students have done? And unfortunately, it looks like I can't really, unless I told my students, uh, perhaps I have six students in my class and each of them uses a specific color. Other than that, it's very difficult for us to really be able to identify what other students have done. Uh, and the other thing is, of course, we can erase anything that other students might have done. So, uh, it, you know, it has its good sides and bad sides, and perhaps this is a good thing. It means you can edit stuff a little bit more freely. Uh, and this comes down to the next item, which is can we edit stuff? And yes, you can. Uh, you can't really edit the original text, especially if it's a picture, like we can't go through and uh, delete anything or change anything, which is good. But in terms of the annotations, we don't really have any control over whether one student deletes another student's annotations or something, which is, it's unfortunate. Now let's talk about the types of annotations. We've shown that we can do text-based annotations. Uh, we can do pen or drawing-based annotations, and we can also insert pictures, and to an extent that could also be considered as an annotation because we could, for example, say, I don't know, we want to highlight something and then maybe our point is, I don't know, something like banana. And you could insert a picture of a banana. I could go into Google and I could search for banana, maybe the fruit to make it more specific and go to images. And I can just take this, right click and copy. And once again, just go back into Jamboard and control V and paste it. And in a way, from this, we're kind of able to annotate with a picture. It's not perfect, but it is something. And it is, you know, a little bit creative, something we can do. And if you do use your creativity, I'm sure you could do some really wild stuff with this. Now, in terms of video annotations, there's not really any way to put videos in this platform. Uh, and also, if we're trying to make an assignment, once again, this is going to be a little bit difficult if we want to assign, say, three annotations, or I want each student to contribute at least three things to this picture or to this article. Uh, it's a little bit difficult to keep track of unless, again, you get specific students or specific groups to use specific colors of pens, in which case then we could try to use uh, something like SpeedGrader or some other grading platform in a learning management system like Canvas or Moodle or something like that. But it is quite difficult, I'd say, to really be able to assess students in this kind of collaborative annotation environment. Now, very similar to Google Docs, I'm not going to go into this in great depth, but uh, this is FERPA compliant. It's fine for the United States. In terms of FIPA compliancy, it may be compliant in some places where the IT staff of some school districts may have arranged for uh, their Google Suite to be hosted in the Canadian uh, servers based in Montreal. But in many cases, Google still isn't quite accepted as a FIPA compliant alternative yet. So if you're an educator in Canada, this is an obstacle that you might want to consider before implementing this in your classrooms. Now, what types of resources can we import into Google Jamboard? Well, we can bring in, of course, like we've seen, pictures. We could also do potentially PDFs and text documents as long as we're screenshotting them, maybe with the window snipping tool and pasting them in here. 
And in terms of things like videos, once again, we can't really bring videos into Jamboard. So that's just something else to consider in terms of the multimodal functionality of this platform. Finally, in terms of where and how we can use this, as we can see, Google Jamboard is a platform that can be used as a standalone platform. But in addition to this, it can be used in almost any learning management system that supports G Suite, uh, which is a whole bunch. And I've mentioned before, you know, Google Suite, it works in uh, Canvas, Blackboard, Moodle, Brightspace, all kinds of learning management systems. Uh, so if you are using one of these learning management systems and if your school district or your university accepts the use of Google, then you would have no problem bringing this in and using this in your learning management system. And even if you don't, you could just use it as a standalone platform if you find out a way to get all the invites out to all your students. All right, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed all this. As usual, if you have any IT ed tech challenges and you'd like to find a solution for them, please let me know. I'd love to do some comparative videos and explore some different products because when I do this, I'm learning a lot more about EdTech as well, and I get to try to help our educators achieve their teaching and learning goals in their classrooms, which is always wonderful for me and also gives me ideas for teaching in my classroom as well. Please remember to like and subscribe and leave a comment for me. As always, learning is everything and everything is learning. Stay healthy. Bye-bye.